scientific illustration is a means of condensing scientific thought into a visually stimulating and easy to understand format. It is often one of the most effective ways to convey scientific thought to individuals in and outside of the field. Through my work with the Great Salt Lake Institute, I have had the opportunity to explore my thesis, which is finding the most efficient way to convey research to the outside world. My illustrations for this endeavor have been diverse, covering realistic illustrations of the reptiles found near the Great Salt Lake food webs, biomagnification models, and depicting Earth and Mars atmosphere. Gypsum and Mirabilite are common precipitates of the Great Salt Lake. NASA's Mars Exploration Rover, Opportunity, found veins of gypsum deposited by water in 2011, and gypsum has been detected on Mars as early as 2005 by the ESA's Mars Express Orbiter. On Earth, gypsum is formed in hypersaline environments and minerals left behind when water evaporates, trapping microorganisms in fluid inclusions. Likewise, GSL Mirabilite develops when mineral-rich groundwater meets cold winter air to create crystalline structures. While there is no physical evidence of Mirabilite on Mars, high-rise image data show white mounds that some experts hypothesize are related to saline groundwaters. Gypsum obtained from Great Salt Lake was used to develop a method to extract halophilic archaea and culture in the lab. The method obtained could be used to isolate potential microorganisms present in gypsum samples from Mars. Mirabilite is currently under investigation for its ability to enrich halophilic life. Hello everyone, my name is Haley Nate, and this is the characterization of halophyte rhizosphere microbiomes at Great Salt Lake, Utah. This research was made possible due to the mentorship of David Parrott, the hard work done by my fellow Westminster students, as well as the help of Westminster staff and faculty. Our abstract is as follows. The saline soils comprising the shoreline of Great Salt Lake, Utah, provide a unique habitat for both halophytes, salt tolerant plants, and the microorganisms that inhabit their rhizosphere. While plant diversity has been well documented at the Great Salt Lake, little is known about the microbial diversity in the rhizosphere. Here we present preliminary data characterizing the halophyte rhizosphere microbiome at two Great Salt Lake locations. The more saline north arm near the artwork done by Robert Smithson entitled Spiral Jetty and the less saline south arm on Antelope Island. The rhizosphere of several plants along the shoreline at both Spiral Jetty and Antelope Island locations were sampled. For each sample, plants were identified Soil salinity was quantified, DNA was isolated, and microbial cultures were established on either MGM or TSA medium. Numerous unique isolates were observed on both media, indicating the presence of both halophiles and non-halophiles in the rhizosphere. Subsequent 16S rDNA sequencing substantiated this, identifying a combined total 58 species of archaea, and more than 1,100 bacterial species along, among all collected samples. Our data suggests differences in the composition of rhizosphere microbiomes depending on location, soil type, soil salinity, and plant species. Decreased diversity of both archaeal and bacterial species was observed in rhizospheres at Spiral Jetty compared to Antelope Island. 
Interestingly, a corresponding increase in the representation of halophilic archaea at spiral jetty was observed, possibly linked to the much higher salt concentration in the north arm. Our results provide insight into the halophyte rhizosphere microbiome and expand our current knowledge of halophyte halophile relationships. To clarify the purpose for our research, our aim is to be among the first to identify the microbes that may or may not be contributing to the survival of salt and drought tolerant plants that live along the shorelines of the Great Salt Lake. I want to thank everybody for your time and hopefully I'll see you on campus soon. Thank you. The Ochre Mountain Limestone is a carboniferous rock unit exposed in the Lakeside Mountains west of Great Salt Lake in northern Utah. Previously recorded fossils from this area consist primarily of poorly preserved tabulate and ragusan corals, brachiopods, gastropods, and crinoid fragments. While the microfossils of the Ochre Mountain Limestone are scarce, the limestone itself contains layers of nodular chert that provide a second taxonomic window to this ancient ecosystem. Thin sections from chert samples have yielded 13 different categories of identifiable microfossils. Samples included representatives from red algae, green algae, foraminifera, crinoids, acrotarchs, scalacodonts, and arthropod cuticle, possibly eurypterid. Additional microfossil specimens have been observed in thin section but have yet to be identified. Predominant fossils in the thin sections indicate this area as a typical late carboniferous back reef environment. So this work started a while back when we noticed that two different root species, Macrobella decora and Haruto verbana, had very similar reproductive behaviors. I spent last summer and the fall semester determining similarities in the nervous system of these two leeches, as well as trying to characterize the behavior. Because while we knew that the behavior looked almost identical, nobody had really found a way to measure these behaviors. So I really find a quantitative way of saying that they were the same. Um, we were also curious to determine what was causing the identical behaviors in these leeches. We were looking for a physiological or anatomical reason that these two completely different species would be producing the same behavior. Um, to explore this question, we induced reproductive behavior in the leeches by injecting them with the hormone conopressin. Conopressin is a vasopressin oxytocin analog, and it's responsible for inducing reproductive behavior in many animals, including leeches, which are segmental annelids. Um, we then recorded the leeches for an hour after they were injected and we compiled a behavioral ethogram that can be seen above. So the ethogram, these two diagrams up here and the ones down below. So the two upper ones are the behaviors of the leeches displayed when they were injected with just CI water, so it's that control group, and they showed um, three very basic behaviors, resting, swimming, and crawling. Um, and then down below are the ethograms after they were injected with conopressin. And as you can see, they go from a relatively simple behavior to a very complex behavior. And um, this is a cyclic behavior. And they showed all the same types of reproductive um, courtship and behavior, such as the flaring of the lip and the twisting of the upper body, as well as the same transition frequencies, which can be seen here with the arrows. And the transition frequency is the likelihood that the leech will go from one behavior to another. So we can really compare these two reproductive behaviors and say, hey, they're both going from this behavior straight to this behavior and then back again in the same cycle, which is what we determined for both leeches or found. We also did performed immunohistochemistry on the leeches where we stained the ganglia, and this is a ganglia. A ganglia is a cluster of neuronal bodies along the nerve cord of these leeches, which runs from the head all the way down to its tail end. And we stained it with an anti vasopressin antibody and a coloring agent to determine where the natural vasopressin like leech hormone is produced. Because if they are responding to a vasopressin like um, hormone, then they must also produce.
do something similar to cause their natural reproductive behavior. Um, so we found that the hormone is present in the homologous lydic cells. The lydic cells are the two cells down at the bottom of each ganglia that are highlighted. Um, we know they're homologous due to their location, electrical activity, and um, the fact that they both have the same hormonal function here within both leaf species. So in conclusion, um, we found that both leeches can have reproductive behavior induced by a vasopressin-like analog, and um, the reproductive behaviors are the same, as well as the transition frequencies, which means the reproductive cyclic behavior is also the same, not only that they just present the same characteristics, they also transition to those characteristics, the same characteristic behaviors the same way. The, they also both produce the same leech reproductive hormone, which is a vasopressin analog here, since they both respond to conopressin. And future work for this would be to um, try and determine the behavioral circuit and the neuronal connections that are responsible for this reproductive behavior that we observe.